Check one, check two. Casey, is it game time? It's game time. Well, let's get this smack in then, baby. Welcome to Hood Stocks on a Thursday evening. Yes, sir. Mondays and Thursdays. These are our nights. This is the time that we have quality time with each other. You know, this is when we have a bad, you know, we can have a bad day and then we get together and have a little powwow. We smoke some, we drink some, and then we go to sleep and start all over again. Let's go. Hood Stocks, baby. Like, subscribe, all that good shit. Don't play with it. Whoa. Ricky Boy, Casey, Nito, Nick, the boy Mondo over there, K Nizzle's up in here. <laughs> yeah, we got the whole crew up in this camp, man. Damn. We need a panorama camera. <laughs> oh, look at K Knight. He's got to go check the ass. You're the air in your tires. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, watch when K9 comes back in that door. Just look, look at his eyes. <laughs> look at his eyes. <laughs> oh man, fool. Yes. Welcome to uh, Hoopstocks, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, appreciate you guys coming back. See you guys tapping in. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe button. Who we got in the chat right here? Bop, 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 turtle, turtle ninjas. That that person, that handle's been following us forever. Filthy Rich, what up, my G? Um, who else we got? Oh, shit, DJ Rezzy1, if I am correct, that is Psycho Realms uh, DJ. That's dope, dog. Shout out to that homie right there. Yes. Uh, the Gooch, uh, J uh, Ponce, um, Sinaloa760, uh, uh, Jesus Castillo, uh, Chito uh, Machuca, um, oh, we got Thres. Thres is in the building right there. I see you, my G. I see you have been laying low lately or something. I see you. SSI player. Yes, yes, yes. I see Big C right there. Omar Rodriguez. Space Bullies. I see a lot of familiar handles right there. We appreciate you guys. Love, respect, all that good shit. Uh, let's pay some bills, huh, Casey? Let's do it. Let's pay some bills. Looking for some good quality cannabis? I mean, killer. quality cannabis. Hit up the folks at Killer Cooks. They special like bring you the best quality available from OG to Exotic. They got it. Oh, baby. Hit them up at Killer Kush, Cali at gmail.com, or follow them on IG at Killer Kush underscore underscore 420. And matter of fact, I got a location for you. If you are local to the OC in LA area, matter uh, True Organics, True Organics in the city of Whittier. I'm going to give you their address. Pull up on them. Pull up on them. True Organics in the city of Whittier. Whittier. It's seven. It's 13739 Leffingwell Road, Whittier. True Organics. Pull up on them. Oh, uh, Roulette Printing. I uh, want a big shout out to Roulette Printing, sponsor of ours. Roulette Printing is our one is your one stop. Uh, excuse me, guys. Uh, for all your printing projects from finish from start to finish, Roulette Printing will walk you through the printing process and get you the quality prints you need. Conveniently located in the city of Huntington Park, off of Slauson and Maywood. Uh, please Google and follow all their platforms, and that's at Roulette Printing. Matter of fact, let me erase this uh, sponsor right here because they are no longer with Hoodstocks. And thank you. But, bye. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's go to our next sponsor right here. Looking for the best criminal uh, defense attorney in the city of Los Angeles. Look no further. Doug Sherrod is our guy, and he can be your guy as well. Mr. Sherrod used to be a federal prosecutor as well as a district attorney for the city of Los Angeles. He didn't like the unfair politics on that side of the fence, so now he's going to he's going to bat for individuals that haven't have been wrongfully accused or just had a bad weekend. You can reach Mr. Uh, Doug Sherrod at KingKongLawyer.com. Casey. KingKongLawyer.com. Ricky, help me out one time. KingKongLawyer.com Orange County, stand the fuck up. Gutter Phenom is a lifestyle brand that's dedicated to supporting and inspiring individuals with determined to achieve their dreams. We believe that no matter what you come through with, through with hard work and dedication, anything is possible. A portion of our proceeds are donated to organizations that provide vocational training for parolees and scholarships uh, for those in need of drug and alcohol treatment. Jesus! That's what I was going to say. Visit GutterPhenom.com. Use exclusive code HOODSTOCKS2022 to receive 20% off gutterphenom.com gutterphenom.com there you guys are right there right what up my G's I see you guys we, we locking in right here we locking in right here hey Pete Gang let me share this little story about this next sponsor right now right here her name is Sophia and she's Korean Chinese she was born and raised in LA 
the food capital of the world, you know, some might say, but everything changed when she moved to Diamond Bar. I mean, a lot of things change when you move to Diamond Bar. I mean, if I ever wanted to move to a city where I felt like I can commit a peaceful suicide, I would move to Diamond Bar, dog. You know what I mean? Because yeah, that's death. Valley right there, if you ask me. But with her, she moved to Diamond Bar with her uh, husband five years ago, and solid Mexican food was hard to find. Well, it wasn't necessarily solid Mexican food was hard to find. It was the salsa. It's all about the salsa and the taco, right? You know what I mean? Anyways, somebody just modified this. She missed LA, especially the fire tacos and burritos, but realized all you needed was some bomb hot sauce with any taco. Man, this is written all fucked up. Who rewrote this? All you need is the sauce with 50 15 years of experience, she tried making the ultimate red sauce for those in a Mexican food desert. <sighs> that's, what she, that's what she wrote, but she had it in first person. So I changed it to uh, third person, which, I mean, works. You Ouch. want me to finish it? No. And it turned into a business. No, Kate Taco was her inspiration, inspiration, so she named the red sauce Queen Cali. All right? My favorite part is that the sauce is made without any preservatives or dyes, right? You can find the hot sauce on her Instagram at queencali.redsauce or on her website, queencalisauce.co. Order through Hoodstocks with the promo code HOOD15 for a 15% discount. <laughs> And so what is it? It's queencalisauce.com, right? Dot co. Dot co. Hmm. Yeah. Why do they do the dot co and not the dot com? Is well, it's, well, now they, uh, they've they uh, allowed like more uh, endings on websites. So now there's like dot biz or well, there's always dot biz, but like, there's like dot site dot a whole bunch of things that, that Google's unlocked. So you can do dot co dot CA. Dot Cause, dot because everything is just filling up, right? Yeah, exactly. And then there's multiple like same people using the same thing. Same domains, yeah. Same so, domain. So instead of dot com, you can have the exact same name, but dot net. That sucks, yeah, bro. Exactly. Huh. You know, originality is great, bro. You know what I mean? Nope, try again. That's Dude, used already. But nope, people try again. So much for domains. Like people want ridiculous, like thousands of dollars. No, you not on, on domains, thousands. I don't well, like thousands. say well, like say like someone had the domain that you wanted, right? Like hoodstocks twenty dot com. Yeah. And then you request for them, they're like, Yeah, how much are you trying to pay? Because I'm trying to sell it to you for five grand and you're like, All right, come on. Well, you know what you know what's funny, bro, is uh we started that for my son. For, for my son Jules before we kind of had a little, you know, or anyways, um, I, I started a taco business for him, bought him the him and his homies, the cart, and made cards, all the, everything done for it, right? Just to get moving. And say, since they had stopped doing it, the dude wanted, a dude wanted to buy the domain for Oh, me. really? Yeah, he wanted to buy the domain for me. And I was like, well, bro, you know what I mean? Um, well, if you want to buy this creativity from me, then, you know, it's gonna cost you, bro. And 100%, bro. Yeah, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you got the, if you got the, if you are holding the deck of cards, bro, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, you know, how bad do you want this bitch? It's yeah. business, bro. Yeah, that's capitalism and it's finest. It's business, and to make a long story short, I'm a fucking Jew, bro. I still own the name, dog. He didn't want to pay the money, dog. You knew that. You knew that was coming. You knew that was coming. He wanted to drop me five hundred dollars. I said, nah, bro. You know. You said five thousand dollars. Nah, nah. I said two thousand, and then I dropped it to fifteen hundred, bro. He didn't want to take it. So well, if you're listening, bro, Lucky will give it to you for five hundred dollars. But you know what I want to do right here with this? With uh, the it, it's just ah, I hate when they do this to us, bro. And since you've been reading it, I believe you have tail you have been able to ta tailor yourself yeah. to this. Yeah, exactly. But for for someone just to come on and read this, I'm just like, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's, I, it's, I it's, could still do it. I mean, I enjoy doing it. Yeah, I just wanted to move her to the front a little bit and try to, you know. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, move her, move her to the front a little. But anyways, let, let, me, let me say this. This is a Korean chick. I talked to her dude, her husband. He's a fucking really cool dude, man. But I guess his wife's name's Sophia. And she has that. Where's that sauce at, bro? Uh, can, we, can you? I, I think we finished it. Oh, we finished it? Yeah. Is, is the sauce in the, in the fridge, uh, Mondo, please? What about my sriracha? <laughs> Sriracha. I think we hate it with the with the oh, spread. Yeah, Thank you, yeah, yeah. Hey, so this I'm is take that one home. No, you're not. Damn it. We only got Queen Cali. I mean, when we're done with the sponsorship, you can take it home 100. percent This is Queen Cali. You know what, guys? This is good salsa right here. This is good salsa, and you can get it at QueenCaliSauce.co. And um, it's a, it's a versatile salsa. It's thick. You can spread it. Um, I mean, it doesn't taste like anything else that's ever been on my palate, and it's good, it's decent. I mean, the salsa business is hard, right? You feel me? What kind yeah. of salsa do you like, my boy? 
Just homemade, just meat market, homemade stuff. <laughs> yeah? Damn, you're a real Mexican then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. No more bullshitting right here. We had a little rocky start, guys. Let's get it. Let's get it cracking. Uh, back. Um, this this homie is returning, a returning guest, and the first time that he was on this podcast, I believe he has on his first interview right here. He has about a, a hundred and maybe twenty five thousand views on that interview. It was a banger, bro. It was a really good interview. It was a long one, and um, you know he 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 had very very interesting story. But with that said, I want everybody to give it up for JoJo Boxer uh, Godinez. Let's go. Nice to have you back, my boy. Good hey. to have you back, bro. Hey, happy new year. Lucky to you and the whole crew and to the Goonies, man. Um, expecting a good year here, man. 2024. I'm feeling it already, man. Kicking it off strong from the get go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, 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 we're going hard, bro. We're going hard. Like, man, it, it, man, we go this year, this, this month to me has felt like four, five months. <laughs> That's for real. Has it? It has. It has. This month has felt like it's was. It's been like four or five months. We have gone crazy hard for a number of reasons. We've been outside, and we're. I'm. I'm not working, so the boys are. They rocking with me on these back to back podcasts. Mondays, Thursday nights. Once in a while, we got some coming up on a Friday night, a Saturday night, and so Dang. we just we we double we doubling them up, almost tripling up the podcast in uh, comparison to what we usually do. Um, but it's been a beautiful thing. But and I'll let you speak because this is this is <laughs> I, this is you. But I want to say this, guys. You know what? Uh, we we got to preserve. Our, I got to preserve myself, man. You know what I mean? And these guys right here are a fucking bad influence on me. All the way down to fucking Nick Nick the Frick over there. And uh, no, <laughs> I'm just fucking all the way over to Mondo. You know what I mean? These guys are a bad influence on me, bro. <laughs> I've been partying like a fucking animal, bro. And mind you, I can't come off from like a three month, uh, you know, sober, sober thing. But how is your? How's the beginning of your year been? All right, it's been going good, man. You know, just a lot of, um, just a lot of production coming through. You know what I mean? In my in my my last job, and then I got this new work going on that I'll get to. You know, but lucky. Before I go any further, man, I just wanted to thank you and the whole Hoodstock platform, man. Because the last time I was here. I talked about that guy that um, was very instrumental in my life changing. That guy, Gabriel Osito from Tepa. The Archangel. The Archangel, bro. That guy, because of Hoodstocks, I guess one of his homeboys got a hold of him. He came back over here to um, Lennox for a funeral. They were like, hey, there's a homie on, on Hoodstocks that's been looking for you. So after 30 years, I was reunited with this guy and we're in contact now. and. He's still serving God, and we fellowship, and it's a good thing, bro. Refresh my memory on that. Refresh my memory on that. Is it somebody so, you talked about in the podcast? Yes, he's the yeah. one. He's the one that. Um, yeah, he's the one that I said. You know, his name's Gabriel. He was like an angel. He came in at a time in my life when I was, um, you know, where God just started to deal with my heart, and he was the one that led me to the Lord, and he took off real fast. Remember, I said like he was two there. Weeks. He was there yeah, like yeah, two weeks. Two weeks. He was on a violation. You know, he he had just got out of YA, and he was with me at Medium North, and um, they had caught him with a box cutter. He was going. He was doing good. He was a Christian, right? Got out there on the streets doing good, and um, Inglewood PD pulled him over, caught him with a box cutter, violated him during that violation. He impacted my life. And it's crazy though because when I was finally reunited with him, he didn't really remember me. He was like, oh yeah, what's up, bro? Whatever, but he didn't really remember me. But as we started talking, then it started coming, you know, where he started remembering. But when I started telling him where my life was today and what I went through in the last 30 years, he was blown away by my testimony. I was like, you did that. You played the instrument in my <laughs> life. <laughs> and here we are. And trip off this, Lucky. He only lived like ten minutes from my house the whole the, the <laughs> whole last twenty years. Damn. And for, I never ran into him. Forgive me, God, for saying this, but um, did he did it? Did he just tell you, hey, homie, that's the game that I ran every time I was in the county for a couple soups and a Snicker bar? <laughs> nah, man. Nah. He got out and continued, bro. He got out and continued in the faith and serving so the church. So it was real shit. Yeah, yeah, it was real. You know what I'm because saying? Because let's be honest, bro. Back in the day, bro, mm -hmm. some of the old 
OG homies when they're fucking Malias and mm-hmm. shit. They got the snakeskin boots on. You know, they shitting themselves, <laughs> all that. You got to watch out for you a little youngster too, homie. Them motherfuckers are sharks, homie. Yep. They'll be like, hey, little homie, come here. Let me read a scripture to you, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, and, you know, hey, bro. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right, you know? Uh, you know, the Bible talks about, uh, you know, wolf in sheep's clothing, bro. You know what I mean? It happens. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, grab onto that Bible or any other religious form and, you know, try to navigate, you know, the best way possible. But I believe, though, you know, Gabriel coming in my life at that time, I be- really believe he was God sent. And, you know, my life is evident from my encounter with God because, you know what? I ended up doing almost, you know, the next uh, 13 and a half years, almost 14 years serving the Lord. And I got out and I continue to this day, Lucky. You know, it's 30 years since I made that commitment. You know what I'm saying? So there are real encounters. You know, when I had that encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, nobody could tell me different. And like I said back then in the last story is that I wasn't looking for God. I was I was kind of happy with my standing and where I was. You know what I mean? I felt like I had a good name, a good reputation. I was on the right road to where I wanted to go. You know what I mean? And it's like kind of like uh Saul in the Bible though you know what I'm saying he was a religious leader he ended up killing Christians and then when Jesus knocked him off his his donkey or horse or whatever it was his life was forever changed and that's my story you know what I'm saying and um you know we could pick up from where we left off last time it was me coming home and what I started doing because the whole transition coming home after 14 years you know um you know, I shared in the first story how I got married real young, lucky, to one of my homegirls, yeah. got her pregnant, and then I left her. You know, if I if you remember correctly, I committed my crime in 89. I fought it all of 89 and got out in 90, right? And when I got out, um, I got with her, and I kept on going back and forth to juvenile hall and whatnot, but she, um, she was still in my corner, right? Ended up getting her pregnant, got married, and then about uh, four or five, let's see, April, May, June, July, three months after I got married, she was already pregnant, probably like four months or five months. And um, they refiled on me. So, you know, it was kind of cold on my part, you know, marrying her, getting her pregnant and then leaving for life, you know what I'm saying? But I did what I did before I met her, you know what I mean? That's, um, you know, I didn't do it on purpose, get her pregnant, because I knew I was gonna go do life, you know what I mean? And if you remember, I was trying to do good at that time. I was really trying to, you know, change my life somewhat, you know what I mean? I was still, I still had one foot like in the neighborhood and trying to prepare to be a dad, try to be a husband at the same time, you know? Because like I said, I had just I had just got done beating uh, that case, right? And when I got out, you know, that was hanging over me a little bit. And even if the homies were like, hey fool, like you better relax. He like, you just, you just, you know, missed the bullet fool. You were real close to catching that lottery ticket. So anyways, um, let's just speed it up. I don't want to go through my whole story, but just a recap for anybody that didn't see the first story, you might want to go back and see it. It's kind of long, you know, but, um, you know, I talked about being brought up in uh, in the city of La Puente, uh, eventually transitioned into, into that gang lifestyle, you know, being around it my whole life. At 16 years old, I got involved in a gang-related shooting. I was tried for it. I was found guilty, and I was sentenced to 45 years to life. And uh, I was happy with that. I was okay with it. You know, that was the the expectation: either die in the streets or end up going to prison, or something like that. You, you, know were, the, you were the homie, and, and you know, for, if, excuse me for this, brother, because ahead, you look. know we go through so many different stories. Yeah, yeah. Your story, I, and I don't, I don't, ref, I don't refresh on these stories, bro. Um, mm-hmm. But I do remember all stories, and I, and I think this was a part of your story. Was first base. Where the homie got killed? Yeah, the blood on the ground. On the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my one of my homies. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. My okay. homie Jesse. Yeah, <laughs> and I remember the comments. They were like, "Yeah, he thought he was all hard. It didn't have to be hardcore playing on the blood." You know what I mean? That was our life, playing in the streets. That was it. It First was. It was yeah, oh, was that home base? Yeah, yeah. Home, it was home base. Home yeah, base, home base. Home base. Home yeah, that was the center where where's he got the, killed. Was right in the middle of the and street. And it was a blood stain on yeah, the street. Yeah, it stained on the asphalt. And you guys use that as home base. Yep. It was during July. There was no rain. Nothing washed it down. It was right in the middle. So street cleaners. You know, they only do the side. So, you know, it was right there in the middle of the street and it stood there for a while. You know what I mean? And I know some of the last, you know, last uh, on the last episode, they were like, oh, yeah, that's disrespectful. You know, me's blood. You know what? It is what it is. I was I I was 
I was probably like seven years old, eight years old. You know what I mean? It was no disrespect towards my homie. You, were, you know you what I'm saying? You went to them comments, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you stay, stay out of them. You know what I'm yeah, saying? But no, so actually, some of them. Sometimes when actually, you go no, through those comments, it's like you, you put the neck, you put the knife in you, and as you go further into the comments, you're just sticking that knife deeper and deeper into yourself, dog. You know you what? Know what I mean? they, they don't fade me, though, Lucky. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I know what I've been through. I know where I'm going, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I know where God's brought me to, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. If I was so concerned about pleasing man, you know, I would probably still be where I was 30 years ago. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Go, I like but that, anyways, though, I respect I respect the comments. You know, everybody has their opinion and whatnot, but well, I'll 20, tell you, right. 2022, 20, yeah. 23, 24, baby, you know yeah. what I mean? Seven years old, though, you know what? I, I Come on, I ain't trying to disrespect my dad on me right there, you know what I'm saying? It was just, that's where we played, that's what we did, that's, hey, in the neighborhood, you know how it is, man. Something happens, hey, you just keep it going. Life continues, you know what I'm hey, saying? you know what, dog? Back in the day, dog, real men fucking smoke camo non-filters, dog. <laughs> now these motherfuckers are walking around with vibrators in their hand blowing out banana ice, dog. You feel what I'm saying, dog? <laughs> hey, I fucked her! <laughs> <laughs> hey, that I, was, I was listening I'm telling you I'm listening to Andrew Rice Clay and I was thinking of jokes bro to say like his bro <laughs> hey you know what real men back in the day used to smoke camel non filters now they're fucking running around with vibrators in their hand blowing out banana ice no? That's a good one. <laughs> that's no, that's a, good a good concept. One. Yeah, you know, that's, that's fire. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, so anyways, you know, uh, I end up um, just finishing the recap. I end up getting out. Um, I was I was the first lifer to parole out of Corcoran, New Corcoran. I, I, let me clarify that, SATF. And, um, you know, I... I didn't know um, I didn't know what the challenges were going to be coming home, you know what I'm saying, after all them years. Um, and I wanted to come home, you know what I mean, as any other lifer getting a second chance, you know. Um, we mentally prepare ourselves for them lifers that are trying to get out. You know, there's some that just give up and that's their life, you know what I mean? Hey, I'll power to them, you know what I mean? But there are some that really righteously try to get out by going to college and getting all their self-help groups and attending college and, you know, writing remorseful letters to their victims, you know what I mean, or whatnot. And um, I was one of them, you know what I mean? Even though I was content with my life term lucky, I was like, you know, I'm perfectly fine with it, you know? I accepted it, you know? I knew that, you know, that I wasn't a good kid on the streets and I knew that I was um, deserving of my life term, you know? I, there was never no pity party with me, you know? There was never no um, poor old me, you know? So when I came home though, and now I have a wife, and thank God for my wife, man. Shout out to my wife, Dahlia, because uh, she had my back from, I'm talking about from Juvenile Hall, Why? Still with the same one? Same with the same one, man. Damn, yeah, homie. yeah, man, uh, Damn, same one. That's crazy. Uh, when I left her, remember I left her pregnant with my son, and now I have three other kids with her. I have two daughters, and I have a, a younger son too, you know what I mean? So God's really blessed us. And what sucks, Lucky, her waiting for me to be faithful all them years. When I came home, it was probably uh, two years later, she had developed cancer, bro. And I was like, and if you remember my story, man, I had lost my mom to cancer. I lost, you know, just family members of cancer. So when I heard the C word, I was like, that sucks, man. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I was trying to hold it in, though. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to be the strong one for her. Because when you hear the C word, you... In my mind, I'm thinking my mom went like in six months, not even six months. She probably went like in four months from the time she was diagnosed to dying was like four months, bro. So when I heard this with my wife, I was like, and we found out when we uh, on my daughter's um, first birthday, we, we got that information on her exact birthday. Damn, the doctors bro. told us. And when the doctors told us, look, it was like he was cold with it. He was like, you know what? Your um, your um, what's that? Um, when they pull when they pull a part of the. Uh, biopsy your oh, biopsy uh, comes like back and it, it's showing that you have cancer blah 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 okay we'll we'll talk later on we'll say something all right okay uh see the receptionist on the way like That's that it. was it like i was like wait wait wait, 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 wait doctor what, what did you say right now and he said yeah you know her she has um but it, the trippy thing is oh they said that um the cancer that she has if you want any cancer that would be the cancer because it was thyroid cancer mm. so they ended up having to cut a big old slice across her neck they removed her whole thyroid and now she has, um, you know, she has to take supplements to offset the the thyroid, right? Yeah. But we didn't know what was happening. You know, they told us she was going to have to go through radiation and, and this and that. I had to put her in a room and, and tape off the door and everything because, and it was crazy because when I would go feed her and open the door, the radiation would like start to give me a headache. I was like, dang, that must have been like a heavy dosage, you know what I mean? Wow. But they had to isolate her and... 
it was it was crazy. But you, were, um, you weren't even taking it. You were getting a headache. Yeah, I wasn't even taking it. I was getting a headache just by feeding her. You know, she was like under quarantine. And it was crazy because prior to her getting it, the doctor has told us that I had to put plastic all over the walls and everything, I guess, um, because after if we don't do that, I guess the radiation sticks to the paint or something or or something. But they made me put plastic all around my. I was like, man, I'm about to do a hit on my wife or something. You know what yeah. I mean? Plastic on the floor, everything. And um, yeah. So, um, but thank God though, bro. That was back in 2005. Um, this was a uh, three, four, five. Yeah, two years right after I got out. So, you know, having to deal with this. Um, being a father, being a husband, it was hard. It was really, really um, hard to take in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, the good thing about it, though, is when I first came in, I went through the Walden House program down there on Hill Street in downtown LA, right there on the Hill in Pico. And um, it's a residential uh, behavioral modification program. And um, so I went there, and I remember when I went there, my parole officer had told me, you can leave the program, you just can't go back to your neighborhood because I had special conditions, you know, a part of my parole conditions. So my wife had told me, we'll find another house, we'll go get it, man. My wife, I mean, man, I, I, I can't even exalt her enough, Lucky, on what she did while I was gone, raising my son. Um, How many years were you gone again, brother? Almost 14 years, 14 bro. years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with her, I did 13. Prior, I, I'm counting that other year when I fought it and didn't yeah. get it now. Yeah, so but you, it was 13. Just to recap it, you, you got sentenced to how many years? 40, like? 45 years to life. And you and you only did 13 years of that 40. Why why'd you, I, I forget that part of the story. But well, I ended so up I, I, I ended up going back on appeals. I ended up okay. getting, um, I ended up getting um, the gang enhancement dropped. I got the conspiracy dropped. And they had, they had me all around, but the thing is, oh, they in when you're charged with the conspiracy case they have to have these overacts that's that's what it's called in the appeals in in the court of law they're called overacts gotcha. and the overacts are like the steps in preparing to go and do you know what i mean your crime and but what happened is though they had them twisted though they were using crimes when i got out. remember i told you when i got out i was still like running amok right so when they rearrested me they were using stuff that happened after my crime so stuff that they should have used was prior to 89. They should have used like my um, my arrest from 88 that had me like gang affiliated and different things. But they used after that, they were already using crimes of 90, which my case happened in 89. So they messed up though. When I went to the appeals court, they were like, you should have, like they messed up, they had me. They just used the wrong information. Oh, I got you. Even on the, even on the gang enhancements, they use stuff after my crime. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that was like that, that, that was on their part. You so, know what I mean? And I would have never known that. You know what I'm saying? But in the appellate court, I ended up, uh, I was in the YTS at the time when my first appellate um, uh, response came back. And that's when I was reading it. I was like, what the heck? And I ended up going back to LA County on appeals. And I got it dropped down to uh, 25 to life. And then uh, a few years later, maybe like three years later, I got another appeal granted because they had messed up on the gang enhancement. Gotcha, gotcha. So I was like, cool. So bottom line, I ended up, when it was all said and done, after, let me see, my last appeal, let's see, 94, 96, 97. It was like 97, I wanna say going into 98, um, I had got that next appeal. So they ended up dropping the conspiracy, the gang enhancements, and ended up, um, charging me for like another, um, it was like six attempted murders plus um, some other nonsense. But when I got out though, Lucky, it was as if, um, like I said, I was preparing to go home if it should ever happen. And when I went home, the struggle became real, bro, where I loved my wife, I loved my son, but I didn't know how to discipline my son. And my wife, you know, that's one thing my wife said, like, hey, that's your son. Like, you need to start disciplining him, man. And here I am trying to be the cool dad with him because I hadn't been a part of his life all them years. So let's let's back it up real quick. And we'll only back it up a little bit. So this is where this is where we start the new story of today's Today. podcast. We gave you guys a little recap. Yeah, yeah. Of, uh, and you guys are welcome to go back and it's, it's a banger. I mean, the shit got like 125,000 views on it because it's that good. And the dude is very uh thorough on sharing a story um so you did the you did the uh 13 years mm -hmm. so now you're out 
And how old is your son? My son was uh, 13. He was 13 now. Okay, so your son's 13. Okay. Okay. And so how, how, how you, now your wife is telling you, you're fresh out, fresh out. And she's saying like, discipline him. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's a little, yeah. that's a little tough yeah. right there. Like, you know, right. Yeah. It was, you know, just the, the emotional, the emotional challenges. And let me remind you, I went through treatment. I went through treatment and parenting. I went through, um, couples. There, there, there's so many groups, you know, so many different certificates that I did in there, you know, as a lifer, whenever there was a sign up for, for some self-help group, we were like the first to sign up. Right. Yeah. So I, when I paroled, I had like maybe psh, about a hundred certificates, you know, I don't know, maybe a thousand hours in parenting, thousand hours in anger management. I had all this stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm ready to face society. So when I come home, you know, I'm still in the program. I'm in that residential program in LA, you know, uh, my Walden House family was helping me how to, cause it's kind of like you're, it's kind of like you're still in prison because you're there with, uh, there was like probably 90 other um, parolees. The only way you get in that pr- program is from prison. So you're there with all these parolees, but on the weekends you're able to go home and uh, for eight hours and whatnot. But during them eight hours, they were stressful. Look, and my wife, I remember my first pass, my wife was so pissed off at me. And my, my, my house was clean and everything, but I went and I like double scrubbed my house. I started cleaning my house. My wife was like, what are you doing? Like, just come and hang out, you know what I mean? And I was like, <laughs> I just got, I just, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know what my trip was, but. She like, come get some of these chocolate chip cookies, <laughs> homie. She's like, come over here and chill, <laughs> right? And so I'm there and stuff. And um, so I ended up staying in that program in downtown for about six months. And then I finally go home. And I stood there lucky because every time I went on a pass, my heart would be beating fast. I was kind of like real anxiety being with her, being with my son. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to be the cool the cool dad with my son, trying to understand him and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, But my wife, man, you know, I'll say this much. My wife was, she was probably worse than my parole officer because she didn't want me going nowhere. We live right by a park. We ended up getting a house by a park <laughs> and we would, me and my son would just take off, right? And my wife would come home from work and we weren't there. And um, um, we would get back and she would start yelling at me, where, where are you at? Why didn't you leave a note? Blah, blah. I'm thinking like, man, I'm a grown man. You know, I'm with my son. <laughs> like, how are you going to try to check me like that? You know what I'm saying? She's Mexican, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mexican-American, you know what I mean? Yes. She's born here, but uh, yeah. she was so concerned about me getting picked up. You know what I'm saying? Waiting yeah. all them years and stuff. And um, yeah. Yeah, so it was real hard, bro. Real hard um, arguing with her. I didn't know how to argue healthy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, I still don't know how to argue argue healthy. I know one way to argue, bro. That's the good way, bro. Hey, who the fuck locked the door over there? (laughs) Who the fuck locked the door? (laughs) Man, you got old boy. You got old boy all mad again. Look at him. (laughs) No, it was the second time that's happened, and that's important, bro. (laughs) The guys don't get trapped out out there, bro. And they set the chair up like it makes it look pretty in the front, bro. Like, I'm going to set the chair up right next to it, too. It looks like it's our porch. (laughs) (laughs) But I think arguing is, 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 uh, you know, some people are good at it, bro. Yeah, no, I learned healthy ways. We learned healthy ways to argue, but what's a healthy way, bro? But a it's, a way, healthy, it's a healthy way, a fun way, though. That's what uh, I want. I don't think it's. I don't think it's fun. There's a lot of resistance, and there's even some compromise in so it. So is it but, is it even considered arguing then? It is. It is because there's disagreement. You're not on the same page. You know, there, you have like, different views. Is it kind of like two dudes arguing with each other naked with their dick tucked in between their legs? <laughs> I don't know. I never argued argue like that. Saying? Lucky that I've never argued like that. So Go I wouldn't know. But. Uh, <laughs> But no, no, you know what? And, I, and I'll confess, you know what I'm saying? I would get so mad, but I wouldn't put hands on her butt. I'll be honest, so. <laughs> but I would ahead. hit her with a pillow. I'll throw a sock at her. I'd be like, just like, shut I'll up. I'll break a like, plate over her head. <laughs> nah, it was always something soft, but I'll be like, man, like, shut up already. And, um, you know, one of the ways that I was able to manage, you know, my anger within prison and not um, react so quickly was just like kind of, um, you know, doing the different tools of anger management, you know, counting in my head, walking away, you know, cooling down, then readdressing something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of like know, what th- I did earlier, right? Huh? Kind of like what I did earlier, right? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> a little so you're bit. saying I can use some work then, Yeah, huh? a little bit of work, Lucky, a little bit of work. But anyways, though, you know, we had to work through all of that and stuff, And but it, it got really bad, at, you know what I mean? Because she really didn't understand what was going on in my head and whatnot. And all I want to say is that, um, 
you know, I put her, I put her through some blues, man. Like really, like just having her stressed out about just some of my actions. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't out there acting a fool or nothing like that. It was just like I wasn't used to um, having a woman speak to me the way she was speaking to me. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Like especially the words like "you better do this" and "you better." Do. I'm like, man, I better not do a damn thing but die. You know, you like you got me messed up. You know what I'm saying? And there was a, it was hard to like really um, submit to her. You but, know, what but I, mean? I don't understand that, bro, because okay. you submitted in prison, bro. And you submitted basically to the to to to, to the game that was going on in prison yeah, for, yeah. for thirteen years, mm -hmm. bro. So why was it hard to submit to a woman? Because on the in there, in there, we understand the structure, we understand the line, we understand the respect talk, we understand you know boundaries, we okay. understand. And nobody was getting at you like that. Yeah, yeah, that. nobody was crossing it. And if yeah. somebody did, you know, there was an appropriate way to. I was able to talk and address it. You know, I didn't. Yeah. I, I didn't have to take flight on somebody because. You know what I mean? They sat on my bed without asking or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I was a little bit more tolerant. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah. a lot of it was maturing in my spirituality where I didn't have to snap and put hands. or And I never really felt challenged. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, thank God for that, that I didn't have nobody push up on me. I knew how, like, I think I shared it the last time. I knew how to navigate and do my program without disrespecting the homies or anybody else where I, I felt like, Oh man, now I gotta save face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Christian or not, now I gotta save face and or else. You know what I'm saying? I I never felt like that. But this is my wife, where I would figure, you know, and I and you know what? To, today, lucky I can say that I don't think she meant any kind of disrespect. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that so was either. just her way of communicating. 100%. And a lot of it was out of fear for me. You know, yeah. I I really believe that my wife meant nothing but good for me. Hundred percent. And. and she wanted nothing but for me to succeed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there were certain things that she would do that would push me away. Like, one thing is when we were arguing, this is before she, remember, I'm the one that was in there getting all the different skill building stuff, right? Yeah. She never got that, so she only knew how to argue like you. Yeah. One way. But you know what? <laughs> but, you know, but check it out, bro. Earlier today, that was out of fear, bro. Fear for the guys, bro. Fear for the guys. No, no, no. I know, so I know exactly what you meant. Sometimes we don't, we direct our words properly, yeah. but that was behind fear for the yeah, boys yeah, yeah. that come in and reasons. out of this yeah, bitch, yeah. dog. You know what I mean? No, 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 because I we've, had, we've had situations. a, a I know. situation before at another studio, bro, That why we ended up here, bro. No, I get and it. And to, to that day, bro, nah, bro, those mistakes can't happen, dog. Yeah, yeah. No, no, and I think homie knew. Uh, yeah. I mean, he, he recognized it and was like, yeah. dang, I messed up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But, um, hey, but it wasn't the first time. Yeah, it was yeah. the second time. So yeah, yeah. that's why I was a little his over pay, the top. His pay's docked now. All right, we're good. <laughs> uh, well, I just want to say that, that I'm not I'm not a dick like that, bro. Yeah, yeah. I just that no, was no, that I, was out of that that was out of fear for the guys, bro. You feel me? I seen it out of care and concern. You yeah, know, what that's I'm saying? all it was, bro. That's because all it was. because we've had a situation, bro, that was almost bad. No, I know. You know what I mean? No, no, yeah, no. But you anyways, mean, you mean, well. yeah. So, anyways, let me let me get to you know, and I, and I appreciate you having me lucky and being able to share this. You know what I mean? So. I wasn't the only one. I ended up becoming a counselor, a behavioral modification counselor, drug and alcohol counselor. I was monitoring uh, parolees, probationaries. I had uh, men and women from DCFS, you know, for like almost 18 years of my life. Coming home, I was a counselor, right? I was a counselor in there, a mentor. Yeah. And then when I came out, um, you know, I pursued that. And it put me in a position to be able to help a lot of people, a lot, you know, a lot of people where I come from, you know, I knew a lot of people coming into the programs and I was able to help them and get them in the right direction. And, you know, a lot of them are being successful to this day. Right. Is this going to tie back to you and your re wife with your, your relationship with your wife uh, skills from that? Or did we just get away from that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're kind of okay. getting away go, from go that. Ahead. We're going to move forward. Yes, that. sir. Um, so anyways, where I'm at today, you know, the last 20 years, when I first came home, Lucky, as a matter of fact, when I first, first came home, you know, I was like the, the poster child to a lot of different things, right? First lifer, you know what I'm saying? Uh, at my church, you know, it was like a big thing, you know what I mean? Like, because the pastor knew me, so he allowed me to go and minister to a lot of places, go share my story, my testimony, uh, give people hope, all these families, right? And, um, you know, I had a lot of speaking engagements when I first came home and I was all fired up to do that. I wanted, I figured God released me for a bigger purpose than just to come out and start hard labor. You know what I'm saying? I believe that God had a calling on my life. So um, I went into counseling, right? And 
it wasn't long till family members of the incarcerated started hitting me up. Hey, Jojo, my son's doing life. You know, um, do you think there's any action for them at the time? You know, I can't say yes or no. I was like, you know what? Um, if he's programming, if he's doing the right thing, you know, there's always hope. There's always a chance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. no different than nobody else, you know? But my program in there was a reflection of me coming home. You know what I'm saying? And, and God's grace. More than anything, it was his grace. It was right at the perfect time. Greg Davis being recalled. Uh, the, the state wanted to dismantle the, uh, the um, prison board. There was a lot of things politically going on. And I happened to slide in right at that crack and get my hearing and, you know, the rest is history. But anyways, I had all these families that started hitting me up, Lucky, and um, it was getting overwhelming because I didn't have all the answers for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't have all the, the energy to be there to you know, um, offer them, you know, support the way I knew they were asking, right? And um, I started I started prison ministry. You know, I wanted to keep my heart close to in there. So I was writing a lot of people and I, you know, a lot of homies would write me like, hey, Jojo, can you go to my mom and check up on my mom and, you know, tell her I'm doing good. Let her know, man. She don't got to worry about me. And I had homies, you know, telling me to go, um, you know, deliver messages to their wives and stuff. And, you know, these are all personal, real personal things. But the homies trust me enough to go and do this stuff. Right. I mean, I wouldn't want no homie to go. I mean, actually, you know what? I had like two homies that were real, real close to me that went and looked out for my wife and my son. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. would stop by, took my son to like football games and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? And really looked out for me. But here I was. And, you know, when you start, you know, dealing with families, it's real personal. You know what I mean? Especially when you start giving advice and whatnot, you know, um, you got to be real careful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because whatever you tell somebody out here, if they tell their husband, their their girlfriend, their mom, or whoever, hey, JoJo told me this and that or whatever, they're like, who the hell is this fool? You know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you to do something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to be careful when you, um, you know, interact with families that are in there. But this was happening more and more and more, you know, emergency calls, JoJo, and blah, blah, you know, uh, my husband called me and he's cussing me out because of this, that, and that, and I'm like, <laughs> what do you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's none of my business, you know? You need to handle that or whatever. And um, so anyways, I had all this, but at the same time, I started adding to my family. I started having more kids. You know, I started working two jobs. I didn't have a lot of time for all that stuff that I was doing when I first came home, right? So anyways, uh, the last, probably like the last two years, um, God's really been speaking to my heart um, to go back and doing that stuff. And I was, my, my kids are older now. They're, you know, one's in college, one's in junior. Like they don't really need daddy there all the time. You know what I'm saying? They need me, but they're not really dependent as they were when they were babies and younger kids, me having to drive them around, all this and that, right? But the last two years, um, I really started engaging with people. These families are still hitting me up. Homies are still, you know, in there and telling me, hey, you know, and, and my name gets thrown out there a whole lot of being able to help somebody, whether it's with drugs and alcohol, whether it's homelessness, whether it's getting, a, you know, um, employment, you know, somebody will call me like, hey, my son's getting out. Can you help him with the job? Can you help him with this? So I've been having, that's been, that's been like the whole course of me being free while working, while being a father, being a husband, you know, doing all of that. So let's bring it up to the last two years is when God really started speaking to me about re-engaging in that. So I have these people that are out of state, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, one in New York, and I'm like, I don't know their prison system. I don't know anything about how it functions out there. But these parents, I understand their hurts, you know what I'm saying? Because when when God started dealing with me, he started reminding me of what I put my mom and dad through, you know, throughout all them juvenile hall years, you know, them coming up with the brown bag, you know, with some low rider magazine, some teen angel magazines, uh, two bars of soap, shampoo, or whatever. And the, the hardship that I put on my mom, being in the box beat up, you know, my mom's shivering, like, what happened to you? Why are you in this box? Like, I'm good, mom, don't worry about it. Like, I put my mom through a lot of stress. And now being out, Lucky, I see this same stress on these mothers, these grandmothers, these fathers, these girlfriends, you know, these daughters and whatnot. And 
in the beginning, lucky I was very selfish because not in the beginning, but a little bit after I started having kids and stuff, I, I was like, I don't got time for other people no more. And I started focusing on myself and, you know, in the life of a Christian, you know, um, that's very selfish. You know what I'm saying? It's very selfish it, to see people hurt yeah. and not um, attend to that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's just, it, it's it's not good Christianity to for something to be brought to us and for us to shoo it away. Brush it to the side. And- yeah, like, you know what? Like, they'll figure it out. Like, you know what? And I and I started referring people to mental health, to uh, therapists, to counselors, to all these professional people. And they would always come back to me. Lucky I couldn't shake them. They would come back like, <laughs> you sent me over here. They don't understand me. I'd rather pay you. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I was like, there's not enough money in the world for you to pay me, for me to... Um, deviate from what I'm doing, right? You sure about that? <laughs> well, they were offering to pay me, but I was still yeah. like, I don't got time, you know what I'm saying? And it, yeah. and I wasn't really feeling it. Um, so anyways, the last two years, God's been dealing with me and I've been you know, doing a lot of online services with these people, just like Zoom calls and um, uh, writing to their loved ones, whether it's a wife, a daughter, a grandchild, whatever, you know, I'll send them a, a little letter, little intro letter, um, I'll probably send them my book, you know what I mean? Um, whenever they're available and stuff, I'll send my book out there. Lucky, thank you for letting me bring my book last time. I should have brought it again, but we got thank it right you for here. that. Oh, dang. Yes, good looking out, good looking out. But, um, know. you know, this book right, that book right there, you know, um, it's like probably in every prison in the state of California now. Yeah. Um, um, it's in the juvenile halls. It's in some of the camps, uh, some of the federal prisons. And it's a trip because I have a, a Facebook page and it's crazy because it says every time somebody purchases, I got people in Vietnam reading my story and in all these different kingdom countries that I don't even know where they're at. But I'm like, how does my story relate or whatever? So I, I'm bringing that up, though, because um, these people, they find me like around the United States and other parts of the world. And like I said, I don't have the answers for it. I don't know what they're going through, but come to find out, you know, they're just hurting and they have questions, you know what I mean? And they don't know how to support their loved ones for whatever reason. So I kind of been coaching them and mentoring them and helping them because what God's been telling me is that um, he desires the unity of the family. And a lot of times it's through confusion and frustration, the anger, of not being able to um, understand their loved ones in there. You know what I mean? Sir. Because there's so many times, lucky I'll get that phone call that, you know, we're helping him. We're, we're sending him money. We're sending him packages. We're going to visit him. And he'll just call us and start cussing us out for no reason. <laughs> and this is where I come in and I start to explain to them, listen, it, it, I'm pretty sure it probably don't even got nothing to do with you. He's probably going through something in there. You're the only you know, the only voice of reason, you know what I'm saying? He's 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 venting out something to you guys that he can't vent out in there or else there would probably be repercussions. Yeah. So he's he's dumping whatever he's feeling out on you guys. And you know what, Lucky, just with that explanation, just that explanation, they're like, you know what, that's good to know. You know what I'm saying? Because we were taking it very personal. Yeah. We're getting ready to cut him loose. We're getting ready to cancel, <laughs> his, you know, his ties with us, you know? I would have been that dude on the other line. I'd be like, cut his ass off. Fuck that little <laughs> motherfucker. You know what I mean? And, 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 and he's probably on drugs. He's on drugs. Cut him off. And if he ain't stabbed by two weeks, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, back good. he's back good. He's back good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, you know, that's kind of what I've been doing the last two years. Um, doing do, it. You're helping our families. You're helping our families with their loved ones in the system. I'm helping out families. Helping them cope. And at the same time, I'm helping them inmates that don't even know that I'm helping. You know what I'm saying? And I, yeah. I don't need no recognition, but it's just a matter. I feel good when they call me and said, "You know what? We ended up having a good visit." You know, because sometimes I gotta just explain to them. You know, sometimes you just need to explain to them that they're hurting your feelings, you know what I'm saying? Like, in there, their feelings are very numb. And I explained this to the family. You know, they're not in there talking to the next man about, you know, I'm stressed out about my kid. I'm in there, you know, I'm stressed out about my wife. I'm in there, you know, they're not talking their feelings in there. They're holding, they're compressing all of this stuff. And when they call home, you're the safe avenue for them to dump all of that. And once I'm able to explain that to the family, and sometimes I'll help them write a letter of just being able to explain to them, you know what, we would appreciate it if you know you wouldn't call and cuss us out. You know, we're we're your supporters, we're your biggest fans, we're the ones here. 
you know? And um, they'll come back and tell me, man, we had a great visit with them. Thank you. How much do we owe you? And I'm like, nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like, like God bless you guys. You know what I mean? You guys um, deserve to be happy, you know? And it happens over and over. You know, just yesterday, um, I got another, um, I got an Instagram message of this girl telling me, you know what I mean? That her, um, it's two of her brothers and her husband are doing life and, um, her her family our first generation um um what is it called first gen um from Mexico here you know what I mean and they don't speak good English and they're having a problem dealing with visiting they have they are always wearing the wrong clothes you know they don't know what to wear you know they so they get there and they they send them to friends outside and they put them in these clown suits and friends outside <laughs> so it's like just simple information like you know yeah. what tell them they can't wear blue jeans whatever yeah. to to minimize the frustration you know what i mean yeah. telling the mom or the wife or somebody don't wear a wire in your bra or else they're going to humiliate you they're going to end up stripping you down they're going to look for this metal on you you know what i mean so it's just simple information to help the families go there, have a smooth visit and everything, you know what I mean? Sometimes really it works cool. out, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So with all that being said, that leads me to, um, I ended up talking to some friends, to some people that do some online stuff and um, they were like, man, you're like coaching these people and stuff, man. You need to like get a website and because you're like handling out more and this and that. So. Um, I started this program called Trapped Families. Yeah, it's and a the podcast, right? The broadcast. I have a website. Okay. I have an online community where, um, let's just say, you know, like wives, mothers, uh, fathers, all these different people. They go into. It's like a. It, it's like a, a. So it's an actual website. It's an actual website with links to your podcast and everything and different things. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, different that to coaching calls to different. Um, different things but the online community that's like the main aspect of what i'm doing because what it is it's a 24 it's a 24 7 um um link so you get a password you know what i'm saying and then you get in there and then let's say it's me I, and my wife's busted and i'm like man you know um she's having a hard time right now she can't she's going pro per on this thing but she doesn't have any legal support and there'll be somebody in there that will be like hey my my husband went through that i know the forms you know let me help you with that so it's a support network within mm. that 24 7. that's cool bro. so you could go in there and, and confess a feeling uh, yeah. once a week i do zoom calls with all the members in there and it's just like an encouragement on Mondays, we have a check-in. Like, how was your weekend? So I like Mondays because the weekend was visiting day. How was your visit? Check-in, you know? Well, how was it? You know what I'm saying? And they'll tell us some had good visits, some didn't have good visits, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, depending on uh, the Zoom, you know what I'm saying? They may say, you know, I need to talk to you a little bit longer, JoJo. So they will go into my coaching, you know, office type of scenario thing. And then in there, I also have like links, um, to book me for motivational speaking, preaching, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I, I do all that. Damn, so, bro. And, um, fucking expanding, baby. Congratulations, bro. Yeah, bro. Congratulations, bro. And then yeah. you, man, you, mot you, you motivated me to start my own podcast. And it's yeah. called, so my website's called Trap Families. Yeah. Right? Trap Families, because that's what it is, you know? What people don't realize is that when we do time, our family's doing time with us. I know there's some families that be like, you know what, forget that fool. He's already been in there 40 times. You know, I'm done with him. Yeah. We done burned our bridges, right? But there are some families that, you know, in the initial thing, they they're, they feel trapped because they're not gonna leave their kid behind. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I didn't go out and commit a crime, so why am I working hard to put money on his books? Why am I getting him a lawyer? Why am I waking up at four o'clock to go visit him in the rain, in the snow, in the heat? You know what I'm saying? Like you're doing it because you love the the, you know, the individual. <coughs> they son. love them. Yeah, and, and and you know sometimes that's the way they feel. Like I can't move on in life without them, even though they're stuck wherever they're at. We're stuck here. I have families that want to move out of state because they don't want to be here paying all these high taxes in California, but they won't leave because their loved one's incarcerated. They're like, once he comes home, we're out of here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. You know, there is there is a hardship, man. I see families divided and blaming one another, a lot of guilt and shame behind our actions. You know what I'm saying? And no offense to, you know, the inmate, man. You know what I'm saying? I know we do what we do. We get in there, and, and I could say for myself, Lucky, I had it easy in prison. 
You know what I'm saying? And what I mean by that is, yeah, yeah, I saw the stabbings. I saw the battery packings. I saw rebar going through people. Yeah, I saw the gunner shooting people. Yeah, I saw a lot of traumatic stuff, right? But I didn't have to pay taxes. I didn't have to go out every day and work. You know what I mean? Going to KP job, that ain't like working out here, waking up early, uh, being with my sick kid. You know what I'm saying? I always tell people because I'm always being invited to speak and um share my story but i'll be like man you guys need to hear my wife's story because that's that's the gangster right there you know what i mean yeah. holding two jobs at a young age got her own house at the i think she was like 23 years old got her first house bro yeah. with nobody's help no co-signers bro Just never me. on welfare no offense to anybody on welfare, but never got on welfare never asked the government for nothing bro she worked two even sometimes three jobs bro damn just to make needs meet for her home you know, to take care of me, you know, yeah. even though I wouldn't ask her, I mean, she wanted, one thing about my wife, man, she wanted me to be close to my son. And she beat cancer, man. She's a superhero, bro. Yo, For she, real. Yeah, she, 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 her. Let's take a break and we're gonna be right back. Okay, so let's get these uh, next uh, half of the ads, bro. And we're gonna have to get son on speed dial. Oh yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. Let me get to this over here, yes, everybody. Sir. <laughs> Big love to Apish OG. You can cop all the amazing flavors of Apish OG at OG Nation in the city of Maywood. Come get your flowers and edibles. OG Nation is a one-stop shop for all your cannabis needs, right? So follow them on Instagram at Apish underscore OG. That is at Apish underscore OG. <clears throat> If you need any jewelry or cash loans, our personal jeweler, D. Leo the Jeweler, has multiple companies who approve financing for his jewelry all right let's say you want the jewelry but you want to pay monthly well they use one of their finance companies they send them the payment and you get your jewelry all right it's that simple also if you're low on cash and need some money they are offering up to 5k loans with no credit check all right you have three months to pay it back with zero percent interest there's no loan in the world that does that that's amazing for any questions, please feel free to reach out to him on Instagram. That's at d.leodejeweler. That is at d.leodejeweler. All right. <clears throat> all right. Let me get this. Let me get this one set up right here. What up? Hold on. No, not yet. For, not yet for you, son. Prepare for blast off and embark on an interdimensional journey of self-discovery and exploration like never before. Introducing the exclusive Rick and Casey interdimensional gummies. Your passport to Rick inners. and Marty. Brand it right, sir. It's Rick and Casey. Look, look at the look at the packaging, dude. Yeah, oh, but, that's, but look, the, look, the look, first look. time was Casey funny, but now you're taking away from his sponsor, bro. It's Rick and Morty, Rick bro. And Morty. It's Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty, guys. Look up I Rick and Morty. I at the end, but yeah, all right, Lucky's a killjoy. Um, interdimensional. So Bro, you say it like that every time now. Unlock, yeah, because it's fun. People want these because you can. But they're going to be looking for Rick and Casey, not Rick and Morty, the actual name of I mean, the dude's brand. I mean, they know. Who's paying for the sponsorship? They know you? it's satire, dog. I mean, come on. The, Rick not, and Morty, there's sir. There's not five-year-old kids in the Casey. chat. Let's go. Unlock your mind's eye to allow senses to but finally it can be come alive first time without listening. strings that strain your perception of the world. With Rick and Morty gummies, you can experience you. all that and more. Make sure you give these dudes a follow on Instagram. That's at rickandmortygummiesofficial.com and tap in with them on the Telegram for more info. Link is in their bio. Good Stocks is brought to you by Dynasty Me. Dynasty Me is a podcast with love and support. So please go to YouTube and hit that subscribe button. Businesses, if you need your stickers to promote your brand, well, here's our sticker plug. Graphic Joe's our guy. Nothing but the quality. And they're construction hard hat certified, all right? Contact Graphic Joe at graphicjoe1376 at gmail.com or follow them on Instagram at graphicjoe underscore, all right? Hood Stocks is sponsored by Lux Tattoos, the best black and gray work in the city. Place your appointments now on Instagram at Lux underscore tattoos. <laughs> Stop it, Lucky Nice Clay. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I fucked her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, it was Lucky cute the does. first time. Casey and Morty, or what? It's like, bro, it was I'm trying to the sell these time. shits, dog. Yeah, but sell it with the brand it's and the dude's paying for it. It's not you being worried about it. Well, I tell him know, to call in if he likes it, because we're gonna change that and we'll get these going, and they'll be way sicker. I think it would be. <laughs> I thought I thought it was I thought it was cute at first, and I thought it was catchy, bro. You yeah, know, so these people come late. You're not bigger than that cartoon that they're biting off of, right? Well, they're already biting, so we're biting off the cartoon. 
Yeah. What do you mean? Where are you part of that company now? Or what? Yeah. Well, yeah. Me and Rick are on the on the cover. Whoa. <laughs> That's why I drew a little hat on it. That's why I said, "What do you mean we're on the cover?" <laughs> I put HLP on. The- oh, you even changed the fucking packaging. <laughs> this fucking guy, bro. We're just having fun, guys. Yeah, I'm with sorry. someone else's money, bro. Jeez. Rick and Morty, man. Rick, Rick and Morty, Morty bro. Morty. Come on, dude. Have some fun, dude. Lucky's got his G-string in a fucking wad today. Nah, guys. bro. That's business, baby. Don't fuck up business, bro. <laughs> All right, you ready for this next one? All you right, like guys. to get paid, don't you? Shout out to the new sponsor, Prize Vix. All right, NFL playoffs are here, and Prize Vix is the best way to get your action on the game. All right. What is the new name of Prize Picks, bro? Go ahead, say it, dog. Um, we are now gonna make some. We're gonna make some picks. Uh, I'm not listening to Lucky Casey for picks. the rest of the podcast. Everybody, look up Casey Picks on. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that. Come on. <laughs> Promo code Droops. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. That would be good if. if uh, All right, let's go. If let's they see were what we selling got here. a product they were biting off of. Uh, we are about to make some picks. We got Sun on the line. All right, we got Sun on the line. Damn, but before son. we do that, um, please Yo, download Prize Picks and use the code Hoodstocks, and you will receive an instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Right? If you deposit one hundred, Prize Picks will give you one hundred. If you deposit fifty. Price picks will match that fifty. It's that simple, all right? That's hey, code Hoodstocks twenty. Can and shut up. Hey, someone said they were already googling that shit, dog. Breaking Casey. <laughs> yeah, right, bro. Right. Yeah, Thank it's, you, on, it's on www50racks.com, baby. Right next to the books. Hey, check it out, guys. Um, so this there's a link. There's a link in the description right now, and it will take you directly through like kind of like our uh, the 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 link they give us for our for Hoodstocks, right? So it just makes it a little easier if you guys like to download this. To Prize the picks. Prize picks. Yeah. All right, we got Sun on the line. Yeah. Sun. Yo. What up, bro? Yo, what up? How you doing? You um, we're doing good, son. You ready? Are we doing good? Hell yeah. Let's see. What were our entries? Uh, we're well, there, still in progress. Yeah, we're still waiting yeah, for nobody those. Plays, nobody plays till Sunday. Sunday, uh, Both games are on Sunday. Ah, uh, both games are on Sunday. All right, all right. We're coming yeah. down. Okay, but we have... To place some picks today, what are you thinking? Hey, does you guys hear that crankling? Yeah, I do. Oh, hear okay. It. Well, let's fix that. Who's that? I don't Nobody? know. Maybe it's this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was hearing that. We want to fix that. I thought it was my my headphone. It went away. Okay, we're good. Yeah, maybe it was the the bending of that cable, Droopy. Uh, no. Uh, Yo, ready? Hey, son, what up, big boy? Hey, so where we what at up? right now? We got three hundred fifty dollars. Uh, we're up sixty two fifty, so that puts us uh, uh, forty one fifty, and so that puts us down uh, ninety eight uh, fifty dollars. Um, so we're down uh, damn near a hundred dollars. We still have more podcasts to get through till uh, Super Bowl weekend. And uh, hopefully we can change the direction in this right here. So hopefully we get some good picks right here. I think we should go for broke on like a fucking, I mean, how confident are you this week with these picks? We're confident, dude. I'm telling you, you're let's, good. Let's let's do it. Let's do a banger, bro. Like let's put a hundred bucks on some shit. Not, well, not all out, but a little out. Let's put, if you feel real confident, let's put like a hundred bucks and do some shit, dog. Yeah, we could do 100 50, bucks. Because this, this $50 this. thing is just fucking $50 us to death, bro, you know? Yeah, but, do it. Well, but do you feel confident to do it? Yeah, hell yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it, dog. Right. So what are you going to do? Casey, go ahead, take it away, buddy. Sorry. What are you thinking, son? Tell me. Dude, we're taking, we're going to take Jared Golf, uh, okay. Rush Yard. Okay. He's going to be doing more? With that, you're gonna, he's gonna do more for sure. More, all right. It seems more. Okay, okay. Detroit right, QB. Then, let's we're see. Taking, we're taking Patrick Mahomes rush oh, yard. Oh, okay. I mean, last week you were saying that eh, he wasn't. Eh. What Patty's changed? Not, hey, we're taking Patty for more. For more, yep. Okay, I'm, I'm praying, Patty. Come on, let's go. And, and we're taking, we're taking the other dude too. No, we're taking, dude. Uh, we're we're taking Taylor. Oh, okay, all right. Not Taylor Swift's boyfriend, right? Please. Sorry, Patty Mahomes, and then we're taking Lamar Jackson too. For how? For what? More or less rush yards? More rush yards. Okay. If, if son, if you were a black man, who would you want to look like if you had a, a two choices: Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes? 
uh, Lamar, son, because that's what has the cool braids and shit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then Patrick Mahomes, he's obviously like half white and half black, yeah, and that's and like a curse from son. the devil right there, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you were the ongoing fucking locker room fucking joke. You ain't even a real nigga. Shut your ass up over there. Yeah, you know what I mean? We got to have that dark skin. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I thought you could say that. Go ahead. For sure. Or in the last one, we were going for Isaiah Pacheco rush yards. Okay. Will we get yeah. more? That, well, those are four right there. You think he'll be getting more yards, though, Isaiah? Oh, yeah, he's going to get more. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, son. All right, son. Yeah. So do you want a flex yeah. play or do we want a power play? Let's see. We'll put in We'll put in the amount this week. We're going to put in 100 as our entry. If we power play, that means we must get four correct. We could win $1,000. And this is real Dude. money, JoJo. This is real money, bro. These are our picks. Do that one. Do that one. Jared, yeah. Jared Goff. Oh, gee. And then after that, bro, we'll just bet like $10 a fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> just so we can get out of this bitch safely, bro. Oh, my we'll God. We're playing smart, bro, you know? Peter pay Paul. Yeah. Right. Fuck so the dumb shit. So we, okay, so these are our picks this week's guy. We got Jared Goff for more pass yards. We got Patrick Mahomes for more pass yards. We got Lamar Jackson for more rush yards. And we got Isaiah Pacheco for more rush yards. We're going to hit a power play at $100 of entry so we can win 1000 All right, we're placing our picks now. Let's go, baby. And let's go. Successful. All right, guys. So remember, hit the link. Hit wow. the link in our bio. If you download Prize Picks, use code Hoodstocks, and they will match your deposit up to one hundred dollars. All right. That's Let's the promo code Hoodstocks. And uh, yeah, bro. So the, now this is fun, bro. We I mean, we we bet. No, we parlay. Uh, I mean, we uh, we hit the first. One. We power played the last one, which would give us five hundred dollars. We we put fifty. And it, we don't Wait, they, no, it's not till Sunday though. Oh, it's not the till Sunday. Not till Sunday oh, yeah. so we still got. Yeah, so we, we still st waiting on one. Yeah, we're still waiting on one. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. That could potentially get us a hundred. Boom. Yeah, let's go. Both or five hundred. Let's go. Sunday, they're gonna be. They're gonna be tight. Yeah, and both of them are on Sunday. Oh shit! I'm gonna try to watch. So Monday's one. so Monday's podcast yeah, is gonna be a cool one. Tonight. Monday's <laughs> podcast. It's gonna be a fun one or a sad one. We going up. We should yeah, see yeah, fifteen hundred up in that up in that prize picks. Who right. the fuck is Jar Jar? Jar 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 Jar. I don't know. Anyways, Jar Jar Lux. Jar Jar like Binks nephew. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks is a is Star a Wars character. Star Wars character. Yeah, that like frog dude. <laughs> that frog dude. All right, I fuck with that, huh? <laughs> Star Wars is cool, man. <laughs> All right, son, love you, baby. We'll see you RP. next. We'll see you Monday, dog. Monday, Monday. Yes, sir. Son, everybody. Yeah. Son. All right. Are we good, Casey, on that second half? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay. Back with JoJo, baby. What up, JoJo? That's pretty cool, man. That's a good little sponsorship right there. Yeah, no, it is, bro. And as you grow your podcast, brother, you know what I mean? Uh, you know? Yeah. You know, these, these are just... Uh, you know, you work hard and shit like this pops up, bro. Blessings, you know, small blessings and they, you know, they flourish into, you know, bigger blessings, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you just got to keep grinding, you know, yep. keep your head down grinding. So, yeah, you got this website going on. You got this podcast. You just had your first episode. Yeah. Yeah, you were, you were, you were interviewing a dude that was grown up and I watched a little bit the SGV kind of catch the flow of what you were doing right there you know yeah um because even even when you don't when, even when in the beginning like like my flow ain't ever changed it's still the same dude with the same personality but you you know you you clean it up and you adjust certain things but it's still the same shit really yeah, yeah. it's the same dude with a silly ass personality and likes to have fun and all that other good stuff we're still doing the same thing since day one yep. um just a little better at it, you know? Yeah. But, um. Yeah, so, you're, yeah, you're so, an inspiration, so, though, Lucky. So, so I was watching your podcast. Mm -hmm. Back to you, I was watching your podcast to kind of, like, see what you were doing. And, uh, you know, it seems, it seems like, pretty, uh, you know, pretty serious, you know, pretty. The dude was uh, from SGV, bounced around SGV. And then he was in, uh, moved to Eagle Rock. Did he, was he from a hood? He wasn't from a hood, though, right? No, I remember he was a tagger. Okay, he, yeah, he yeah. got with them taggers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um. How was that doing your first interview? It was pretty cool, though, because I knew his story, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't trying to let, just, um, I, I was allowing him to share it. Because I could have, you know, threw in a lot of what I already knew, you know what I'm saying? But I was allowing him to share it. And I knew his son, though, his son that 
we were talking about that was fighting the death penalty. He was in LA County jail for seven years, Lucky. His son was? From 19 years old, yeah, from 19 years old, man. I mean, he wasn't gang related, he was brought up in the church, and uh, he just got caught up in something really bad, and um, I was like, seven years in LA County jail, you know what I mean? It's just like, dang, facing the death penalty. But when we got that new uh, district attorney and he squashed the death penalty, um, that's when he ended up eventually getting um, life without the possibility. But um, yeah, it, it felt cool, you know what I mean? Just trying to get my groove and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Keep it serious, but keep it, you know, flowing. But um, yeah, you know, and the whole purpose of my podcast, like I said, you know, it's not a very popular platform because what I'm doing is um, I'm bringing the families of the incarcerated and also them that are addicted, them that them families that are dealing with their loved ones in their addiction, because, you know, especially I can't speak for no other culture, but my own, you know, in the Hispanic culture, you know, we're very private when it comes to family. You know what I'm saying? We're yeah. not the one. I mean, unless you're in that immediate circle, we're not just going to be putting it out there that, oh, yeah, my son, you know, got busted for a robbery murder or my son's out there um, tweaked out. You know, what I mean, he's out there cracked out or whatnot. You know, families don't share that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I have, like I said, I've been dealing with these families for um, the last couple of years, and I know their success, I know their struggles, but I know where they're at today. So they have a, a message of hope for that audience that don't speak on it. And just from that week, just from Sunday till now, I've gotten so many um, um, messages saying, man, you know, like everything you were saying, that's how we feel, you know, we feel, um, you know, hurt and frustrated and angry and, you know, we've been fighting, blaming one another. And, you know, and I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's who it was for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I probably won't have, you know what I mean? The hood stock views, you know what I mean? Because you're just the no, bomb lucky. No, no, no. Bro, stop that, bro. No, no, but listen, though. Come on, though. Lucky, so. It's, and it, it, it is popular because it's drama, bro. And people love drama, bro. You know, what you're doing, bro, is it's 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 drama, bro. It's, yeah. it's real life drama. Yeah. You know, if you like yeah. to look at it like that, and people yeah, yeah, love, that's, that's, people, that's true. people thrive on drama, yeah. you know, yeah. real shit. And uh, you know, and you, you, you know, you just, you, you, I believe that, uh, so I would have said this, bro, because yeah. you said something that kind of stuck to me and I, I was just waiting for you to finish so I can give my little, uh, my little, uh, my, my two cents on it. Mm -hmm. um, so you said you knew his story and you felt like you can tell his story better than he was telling his story. No, no, you? not better. Not I better, just yeah. added to no, it. No, you, yeah. you added to it. There, there you go, I'm sorry, brother, I, I misspoke. Um, but sometimes if you know somebody's story, bro, then that's even better, bro. And yeah. you feel like if they're struggling sharing it and you, you can know, help pull them you up. got a little more gift to the gab, you can yeah, be like, yeah. well, you know what, dog, I know you, bro. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Bop, 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 boo, and you can direct them and yeah, then, yeah. then he'll start getting a little loose, yeah, bro. Yeah. And you know, so. And that's why I felt comfortable though you know what I mean because I knew him and I, I didn't really feel like I had to pull out from him you know what I'm saying yeah uh, there was times when I had to bring up certain situations and he was able to elaborate on it you know what I'm saying well I, I heard you on one part of the interview you were like well well, come on bro uh, give me some more detail <laughs> <laughs> yeah because he was trying to make his life seem like it was it was no big thing you know he just kept on saying it was uh you know he did what what kids did, you know? Well, tell us about that. Yeah, Explain. We don't know, do? you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I know what kids did on my block, but what were they doing in San Gabriel? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, I had to like just, you know, pull out some things like that, but. Um, so when when you do, when, when you're lining these guests up, how are you lining these guests up? And what is the process for these guests to get lined up with you and your podcast? Okay, so the process is like this. Okay, so, um, you know, like I said, I've been dealing with a lot of families, so that's like my first, my first wave right now, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Cause I know their story. Like I said, I know their struggles, their hurts, their pains, but I also know how they've been able to endure. You know what I mean? So they have a message of hope. They have a message to tell these families that are going through hardships, like how they were able to overcome them. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but the process is somebody's going to hear this, you know, this um, podcast and they're going to be like, Oh, I want, I'm interested in being a part of that. So they'll, hit me up in the DM or my email or whatnot. And then I'll tell them, you know, tell me about your story. Give me some bullet points to your story. What, what do you want to share? So when I get that email, I'll go through it. I'll highlight, you know, stuff that I want to reflect on. And then I'll end up having a second interview with them regarding the, what they told me. So what I do is I set up a zoom with them and then they will, I'll tell them, all right, pretend we're live right now. You're on the podcast. Tell me your story. 
and then I have them do that. Not maybe not a long, long version or whatnot, but tell me what your story is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, I'll give them some, you know, I'll give them some feedback. You know what? Maybe we'll skip that part of your life. You know, nobody's interested on how many diapers you wore, you know, for the first year or whatever. You know what I mean? We'll skip yeah. Yeah. some stuff that probably is, you know, we could do without. And then after that, um, I'll tell them, you know, so we're going to set up this date and then that's where we're going with it. That's good, bro. That's a good process. So kind of little, little similar, screening. Similar, you know what similar to mine, bro. I got I, I to always hear it. I got to always hear it on the phone first. You know what I mean? If we get to that point. But I, I would say the, the key to your success mm -hmm. is not playing it safe. That's the key to your success, bro. You know what I mean? And I'll tell you, and, I, and, I, and I'll say that to say this, bro. Okay, you can easily, bro, just be having people coming out of your Christian uh, 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 congregation, just your network of Christian people, bro. But you yeah. know what? These guys hear it all the time, and all their friends got the same network, and you guys play out the same barbecues, the same functions, and, and they have that net network already. Mm -hmm. The way you're going to impact with your platform is not playing it safe by having dudes that are still, you know, maybe getting out on pro, still on the streets, maybe still addicted to drugs, and being the fact that you have a, a, a Christian a foundation, brother, and you can give them... You know, you can pray with them. You can give them hope. You can, you, you, it's not going to be sitting across from lucky. Like, I'm not going to, yeah. like, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. We pray, we yeah, pray yeah. It's all kinds of times on this podcast. But it, it's just, uh, uh, I think that the key for you was not playing it safe and just having people in your inner circle coming on it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. is have dudes that you could really impact, bro, not yeah. dudes that are already impacted. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's know? the goal. That's that, the that's, goal. You know, but, but, that's I, but, but also, too, you're having families, too. So I get what you're doing, bro. But I just, yeah wanted to say that that See, was I, I would say this lucky that the attic the homie busted whatnot they're behind the scenes bro I'm, yeah. I'm ministering to them i'm doing what i'm doing with them but i'm giving these families the opportunity to share because that that's so that's more that's more your your pr pr projectory yeah. then it's, yes. it's the family yeah the fa okay okay so that that's yeah. who i'm highlighting but yeah. the family unit though is being addressed though hmm. so like i said i write letters to the inmate them that need help getting into treatment, I help them get into treatment. So it's like I'm addressing the whole family, but then this is a good idea. I mm -hmm. think this is a great idea, bro. And I like I like having these conversations because I always think of good ideas and bad ideas, yeah. right? And that's all a part of coming yeah. up with ideas. What you should do then is if you're gonna have the family, then you have you have a picture in the beginning of the podcast. You have a picture of the of of the individual that's doing time. Right. Yeah. And saying uh, so and so has been locked up for 15 years. He got arrested when he was 15 years old. And, you know, he's got 15 days until he comes home. And, you know what? Uh, you know, these the parents have dealt with this. The, the, these situations while he's been down and the parents are worried about now that he's getting out in 15 days, yeah. you know, what are they going to do and how the, should they be able to conduct themselves from somebody that's coming home from doing so much time? Uh, you know, like a little cool yeah, yeah, little yeah. story. Build, build it up. Yeah. Build a little story. Yeah, yeah, and then bam, the family and that shit will make that shit interesting, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's dog. good advice, Lucky. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's very good advice. Uh, and nah, we'll take into yeah, consideration. Just be creative, bro. That's, yeah, yeah. All, that's all I'm saying, dog. Yeah. Because sometimes if you're just sitting there talking about somebody, well, you kind of know who the dude is because of they know who the dude is, but everyone else is like, who the fuck are, who the fuck are they talking about? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Yeah, no, no, that's good yeah. advice. Heck yeah, that's very good advice, Lucky. And I do appreciate that. And that, that you know, that's something that I was processing already and it makes sense, you know what I'm saying? But uh, sometimes, like I said, those stuff is private, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like very private, where they don't want their their loved one to be exposed like that, you know, well, for you whatever want, different you want reasons. A podcast, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know, I'll eventually get to that point. But, you know, I'm I'm loving it though because as I get close to these families that are reaching out to me, I'm um you know, I'm dealing with older homies, younger kids, you know, because I also do gang prevention intervention, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of times it's it's these older homies that are calling me like this knucklehead right here don't want to listen to me. Yeah. You know, like, hey, homie, I really need you to speak some positive stuff into his life because I'm getting ready to kick him out. You know what I'm saying? This is a homie that just got kind of like the same situation with me and my son, but he doesn't know how to deal with them because that, that son is now starting to dress a certain way, talk a certain way, being disrespectful. And I got this older homie that's like, man, Jojo, you know, I'm trying to be a father, but I'm, I'm going to put hands on this fool. You know what I'm saying? So 
like I said, when you're dealing with family, it's very touchy. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't want to say the wrong thing. And, you know, of course, I'm praying about it. I'm asking God for direction on how to deal with this. And, um, you know, but I that's a part of my platform as well, though. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times um, it's just, there's just so many different scenarios of family affair that that having a criminal and having an addict, you know, being the centerpiece. You know how they say the elephants in the room and it's it's you know sometimes it's hard dealing with that elephant you know what i mean like i said everything's private you know what i'm saying a lot of times i feel, I feel the private part about it i hear what yeah, you're saying heck, you know yeah but once you start a podcast bro it's no longer private and you know and they're getting <laughs> yeah, from yeah. that camera you know what i mean yeah, yeah that's why that's why yeah. i go through that procedure and i tell them you know what i'm saying i said um it's not easy sharing your story you know what i'm saying i mean you got thousands of people viewing it and here we are pretty much getting naked saying this is my story you know as yeah. honest as and i usually try to be as transparent as i can you know what i mean i'm not going to throw a bunch of junk out there but who i am is who i am and i'm going to speak it you know what i'm saying so i tell people though you need to be like ready to put yourself out there because you're going to get the ridicule you're gonna get the man. Just shut up, chalk it up. You know what I mean? Like, get over it. You're gonna get all the <laughs> remarks that you're gonna get. You know, by yeah. being online. You know what I'm saying? So I do give them that warning and coach them on that part too. You know, so it's a it's a challenge, but you know what? Lucky by God's grace, um, we'll see where it goes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I believe that He's the one that dropped it in my spirit. I ran with it, so uh, I'm gonna be faithful in that area. So whatever happens. Hey. Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah. You know, I, I want to give a sh big shout out to my girl right now. She's probably watching and shit. She's been keeping an eye on my social media lately. I don't know why. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm, you know what, babe? I am not the problem. You are not mad at me. You are mad at every single one of these guys that's in this room right <laughs> except now. Me, except me. Because except Casey. me. Except me. It's Casey. She's it's mad. all. It's it's always. The, you can never trust the man with the silly hat on. You know what I mean? The, 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 she wants me to beat him up, dog. <laughs> I, I'm don't. just fucking around. Love you, babe. Hey, brother. This has been dope, bro. Let everybody know how they can holler at you and they can follow your uh, podcast, bro. Yeah, they could go on YouTube. It's called Trapped Families. Uh, they can follow me on Instagram. It's all called trap. I didn't even know you had a fucking Instagram, bro. I you know what? You on all this stuff. You, you know what, love you bad, though. Bro. I just recently everything was just launched, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, you, you're like one of the. I mean, you're like launching it for me. Because I bear out there. Well, let me put the, some the, hot sauce on you, bro. <laughs> let me put some hot sauce hey, on this lunch. <laughs> hey, you know the thought it was there. You know what I mean? The prayer went into it, and then God said, "Go." That's why I said this 2024 has just been like launching, bro. It's just been taking off and I've been getting a lot of support, you know, just a lot, a lot of confirmation, you know what I mean, on what I'm doing. And um, it's all to God's glory, bro. It's all, you know, trying to keep that family dynamic strong, you know what I'm saying? With, I mean, I don't messed up a lot of families, so I feel like it's my part and my calling. And I kind of flow with it, you know what I'm saying? Like I, like I said, I try to avoid it, but God just kept bringing families to me. God kept. There's and you know when it when when that happens, you got to sit back and think like you know what, this is God's calling. You know what I'm saying? God's calling me to to take care of this. Absolutely, brother. So I'm just trying to be faithful. What he I, I love my business. What I do, I still have my pool business. I'm yeah, making good money. Yeah, baby. But um, him, did you put a little holy water in that bitch too. Yeah. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm starting to back away from that and, and spend more time on my coaching, on my community. Absolutely. And uh, focusing more on that. You know what I'm saying? Look, I mean, hey, anybody bro, you're, you're a pool. fucking good guy, bro. I mean, until I hear, hear different, when I see Jojo Goldinas, though, yeah, I know he's a good guy, bro. You know what I mean? And it's crazy to too, bro, because I know I know some OGs in the game, and they reach out to me. They're like, "Hey, I know the homie right there. I seen him on your podcast. He's a fucking, you know, he's a he's a good homie, you know." And 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 you know, and you were doing your other thing in there, and you know, whatever, bro. But they still like, it, you know, it doesn't not make a homie. You yeah, feel yeah, what yeah. I'm saying, bro? I, I think you know, lucky. You know, I always give God glory though, because you know, I couldn't do it on my own. You know, like I said, when I. When I turned my life to Christ, you know what? I had an encounter with him that nobody could convince me different. You know what I'm saying? And I've always tried to be a man of integrity. If I give my word, I'm gonna keep my word, you know? Yes, Whether sir. it was right or wrong, I, I was gonna keep my word. And throughout, you know, all the prison years navigating, like I said, you know, I knew how to mind my own business and navigate, you know what I'm saying? People always will say, you know, it's easy to be a Christian in there, but listen, it's not easy to go against the flow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not easy to resist the temptations of, Cause let me tell you, I mean, I went through what was what I considered a grief and loss period. When I decided to go this route, the Christian route, I went through some grief and loss, bro. <laughs> literally, I'm because I'm laughing because I have a thought now, which you're saying right now. I'm sorry. And, and what I, I mean, what I, what I mean by that, Lucky, is oh, 
you know, and I, I ain't going to talk all high power. It, it's not important, but like I said, I had I had an okay name. You know, that's how come homies probably know yeah. me from no, and wherever. They, yeah, and they've got it. I mean, they said, hey, that's a good homie right there. And I, I had a little giggle, and I apologize that it, while you were saying that. I get these thoughts sometimes, but that, uh, 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 there was times, bro, after visiting, you know, there's a certain block that somebody might be coming back to from the visit, you know? <laughs> and I'll see some of these Christian homies out there, bro, and I'll be like, hey, dog, what the fuck you doing, bro? Where's your Bibles at, dog? Come on now, dog. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes when the fucking shit hit the yard, you know yeah. what I mean? That Bible's get thrown like a Frisbee, bro. Yeah. But you weren't one of them dudes, and, 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 dog. And you know, salute and to you, you know what's that, the trip, look, like I was saying, though, is that, um, being a man of integrity and, and and upholding my own business so you know that's why i think a lot of homies trusted me with you know some of their some of their secrets as far as their pains and what were what was going on in their personal lives you know and like i said in prison it's not safe to talk about your feelings and your emotions but being a christian though i had thousands of homies come up to me on my bunk hey pray for my wife pray for my mom yeah. you know what i mean hey um you know what I mean, man, pray for me, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm like just going through it right now, whatnot. And um Yeah. You know, and I came home and that's what I'm doing today, Lucky. I'm I'm trying to just continue what I was doing. And like I said though, there was that time period where I was like, you know, forget everybody. I'm focused on my family. I'm trying to start up this business. You know, I'm trying to, you know, provide for my family as any man should. Yeah. Well, forget everybody else. You know what I'm saying? And that's not the way I was brought up. I wasn't brought up like that. And uh, when I saw the problem, when I see problems, I know that God's bringing that problem to me to be part of the solution, you know? So anyways, that's that's where I'm at today, Lucky, man. And um, I appreciate you, man, for allowing me to be on your platform and being able to share what, what God's doing in my life today, man. So it's called Trap Families. T-R-A-P-P-E-D, like trapped and families. Trapped families. Families on trapped Instagram. Families, you guys, yeah. get, you know, go out and support this brother right here. Uh, you know, he's doing good work, man. He's a positive dude, he's a real dude, and he's really about the life that he's he walks, you know, and you gotta respect that 100%. You know, everyone, hey, when someone is when someone is holding their gangster shit down on if it's Christianity or whatever it is, they really, really doing it, you know, we know who the ones are really doing and the ones who ain't doing it, you know what I mean, are the part-time doing it, and you know, nobody, nothing's perfect, bro, you know, so, but I, you know, just salute to you, my hat's off, my hat off to you, brother. Keep up the good work, brother, you know what I mean? Trap families, go subscribe, uh, follow on Instagram and uh, my we my website though lucky is www dot trappedfamilies dot com. Thank you for having a dot com behind that, brother. <laughs> not, not a fucking dot co. You know what I mean? It's like you know what the fuck, dog. Yeah. Uh, so so www dot trappedfamilies all one word. Dot com. com, baby. There we yeah. go. Jojo Godinez. And you got your book on Amazon, too, right? Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. my book on Amazon. Book right there, bro. Yeah. Show them that book right there. That camera right there, brother. Yeah. So it's called Reformed. If you go on Amazon, you go in uh, Barnes and Noble, or you could download it on your phone. It's on the app, uh, Apple app. Um, you can find it on a lot of different um, library, online libraries and stuff. But this is my story. Uh, my wife shares in here. There's a couple of testimonials of some other lifers. And um, yeah, you know, it's- um, That your wife shares in there? There's a Yeah, there's a couple of, it's crazy the way it's broken down though, because it's not like chapter one, you know, my YTS days, LA County Jail, chapter eight or whatever. It's all Jojo and Dahlia. Them are the chapters. So you oh, have to read the dope. whole book. You, you can't know, just skip chapters. You know why I'm not reformed yet? You ain't ready yet. I ain't read it, bro. You know, <laughs> you I, ain't read read it. It. I ain't read it. But I, I haven't read it, bro. Because Let I, the sin I, begin. Hey, bro, you know what? Hey. I am the level of in life, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's gotta be the yin and the yang, baby. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I got you, baby. You know what I mean? I'm gonna keep these sinners and I'm gonna send them your way, dog. First up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just ridiculous, bro. I'm a, I'm a I'm a big time believer, brother, you know, in the Lord Jesus Christ, brother. Um Man. I am um I haven't been praying as much as I'd like to be praying. I need to get back into a routine because I had the, I had it in a routine like, you know, we you know like we program right. I've always had it a part of my program. Every morning, get up, dot pop pop, bam, pray, you know, so on and so forth. 
and I need to get it back into my routine and you know but, you know sometimes man and I'll end this with this sometimes when you get closer to God good things start happening to you bro yeah I have I have seen that so many times when you start trying to get closer to God miraculously things start going your way who would have thought 